So just to say welcome to the Morris Federation series of events and workshops and talks. And uh, this one is in our second one in conjunction with the Tabera Society. And we have Andy Richards, who's going to teach uh, Pipe and Tabor for Beginners. But first, we have uh, an introduction from Stephen Rowley, linking it to the previous session. Over to you, Stephen. Oh, thank you. Here we go. Bit of spotlighting. Ha. Yeah. Right. <clears throat> well, welcome. Thank you very much, Pauline. Um, and uh, we've we've really enjoyed uh, playing uh, uh, along with um, with the Morris Federation. It's it's been great. Uh, so uh, I I, I recognise a good number of people here were at the talk I gave a, a couple of weeks ago about what we can learn from uh, the old musicians. And what we learned from the old musicians is they preferred the way that the tabras played, as, as did the dancers. And the tabras had a very particular style and technique. And um, not, uh, you know, a lot of work was done collecting tunes, uh, but not much attention was paid to collecting the, how the things, how the tunes were actually played. Uh, but a key person in that was Russell Wortley from uh, Cambridge Morris and uh, Travelling Morris. And he went out and he talked to the old Tabras and worked, you know, listened to how they played. And he met in particular Joe Pole of Bucknell. And uh, Joe Pole is a character in his own right, of which if you <laughs> ever want to find out more about him, uh, everything you find out about him is amazing, uh, uh, quite a character. Um, but uh, one of the things we did learn from him and from other musicians is uh, a particular approach to how you play rhythm. And this applies really to every Morris instrument playing for, um, for, um, uh, for Cotswold Morris. Uh, in that um, there was a particular approach to playing the footfalls. And uh, so Russell Wortley um, really pioneered that approach. And during the 20th century revival, um, there were all sorts of ways that people developed for playing for Morris. But Russell really uh, 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 championed that approach. And you can hear his amazing recordings with Andy um on the Letchworth Morris uh CDs as they are now but I when I bought them they were cassette tapes um and it's, it is a very straightforward and quite a simple style but it is about watching the dancer very precisely in their footfalls um and uh, and there is a reason why the pipe and tabba was really well liked because the tabba was able to hit those footfalls really well and put that message out throughout the throughout the team um and andy is 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 the workly disciple <laughs> uh, a prime workly disciple amongst all uh, of the people who who learned from from workly um he certainly profoundly influenced my style and i i very much follow follow him and um we like to um we like to get that back out there because um yeah there's there's a lot of Morris music out there. Some of it is good and some of it should never happen because it's terrible. Um, and we're on a campaign, whichever method you te technique you use, use a technique and don't just play. Um, anyway, uh, and so that is the, the heart of our uh, of how we play the pipe and tabba. So I'm going to switch over to Andy. I'm going to add you. Hi, Andy. Hi. Hi, everybody. <laughs> Right, so um, the really good news is that um, I'm not going to make you dance the whole of this jig. <laughs> but um, because, you know, the dance is really central to the way that we should be playing for this. Um, and, and this is a phenomenal dance. I mean, Bucknell, the Bucknell tradition is just incredible in its glorious style. And, um, you know, I think perhaps influenced by the fact that it it, they always had a pipe and tabor player. They, 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 they were never without one. Um, so we're going to actually have a go at um, either dancing the foot up in your head if you've got medical issues, which means that you can't actually you can't actually get up and dance. That's fine, but you need to be dancing it in your head, or do get up so you can actually have a go at doing the foot up because we want to understand how this 
foot up goes. This is the first part of the dance. So, um, so everybody up who can otherwise mentally get in the zone where you're mentally dancing. And I'm just going to focus it so that you can see my feet. And we're just going to um, we're just going to have a go at the foot up. So it goes like this. It goes left, right, left, hop, right, left, right, hop, left, hop, right, hop, jump, land. Left, right, left, hop, right, left, right, hop, left, hop, right, hop, jump, land. Left, right, left, hop, right, left, right, hop, left, right, left, jump, land. Left, right, left, hop, right, left, right, hop. Left hop, right hop, jump, land. Okay, so that's how the foot up goes in terms of dancing. So what we're going to do um, next is we're going to actually attach attach our taber in some way that we're going to be able to find convenient for ourselves. So. It's fine to have all sorts of different things to hit. Hopefully nobody has the mother-in-law or the father-in-law, but <laughs> hopefully you all have something that is suitable to hit. It might even be some temporary arrangement of a piece of cardboard or something. Um, get that attached and get it in a way that is going to be suitable for you. Um, old style tabers would sometimes have a position like this where the tabers hung down in front of them. You get other old, old style 16th century ones where it's down here. So it really doesn't matter how it how it's attached, as long as it's attached in a way that works well for you and you're not going to have a wardrobe malfunction. <laughs> right, so that's attaching the tabor. The next thing we're going to do is just make sure we're holding our stick correctly. So hopefully you all got some sort of a stick. It might be um, it might be a wooden spoon, who knows. But the idea is to have something that you can go flippy floppy, flippy floppy, flippy floppy. You can see there's a center of gravity there. And I've got a thumb and it's pivoting around the fingers like that so that I can easily hit the table and it's just going to bounce off. It's flippy floppy bouncing off. So everybody have a go at flippy floppy bouncing off. Okay, that's holding the stick. Right, now the next thing that we're going to do, and by the way, we're going to have a policy of dealing with questions right at the end um, so that we can power through everything. So we do with questions right at the end and Fizz is going to be collecting them together. And she is also going to be Fizz of the quiz, for which there'll be more <laughs> there'll be more on that in, in a short while. And anyway. do put your questions into the chat. <laughs> put your questions into the chat, that would be great. Yeah. But we're we're gonna try not to interrupt the flow, otherwise we'll never get through. <laughs> right. So, so we've got this flippy floppy stick going on here. We've got our tabor in its nice non-wardrobe -war malfunction state. It's nice and stable, however you're going to have it. And what we need to do now is we need to be able to uh, establish uh, a little pattern I'm calling mid-edge. So we're going to go mid-edge, 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 mid-edge. Okay, and you might notice if you've got a highly tuned tabor, you might notice that there's there's actually a pitch different difference between those. That that's fine. Don't worry about that. That's more of an advanced issue. We're not dealing with that today. But anyway, so we've got this mid edge thing going on. So um, the tabor's friend really is this mid edge riff. So the mid edge riff works really well in all sorts of situations. Um, Lots of different rhythms it works well with, and it'll get you out of a hole if you don't really know how to save it for something. Mid-edge is, is often going to be your friend. So 
let's just try a little bit of mid edge stuff. I'm going to um, I'm going to sing the tune and I'm going to sing it to the magic lyrics mid edge. <laughs> Isn't it exciting? <laughs> so here we go. Mid edge, 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 mid edge. Okay, right, so that's our, our nice little mid-edge riff. What we're going to do now is we're going to try and really apply the dance thing that we were doing a bit earlier. So if you're not already standing and you want to be standing to, to do this, we're going to try doing that mid-edge thing and we're going to try um, doing it while we do some stepping and uh, see how that goes. So here we go. So we're going to go left, right, left, hop, right, left, right, hop, left, hop, right, hop, jump, land. Left, right, left, hop, right, left, right, hop, left, hop, right, hop, jump, land. Left, right, left, hop, right, left, right, hop, left, hop, right, hop, jump, land. Okay. So we've done our mid edge and what we're doing at the end there is we're emphasizing the jump. So we're trying to propel the dancer. It might be somebody like Ollie who goes a long way in the air or it might be um, somebody who is a large consumer of the local ale who perhaps doesn't go quite as high as Ollie does. <laughs> but um, the idea is we're going to match the height that they go into the air with that tavering. So let's just try it without the stepping now, just see if we can get that mid edge, mid edge with the, um, the, the rise or the jump at the end. So mid edge, mid edge, mid edge, mid edge, mid edge, mid edge, jump, land. Mid edge, mid edge, mid edge, mid edge, mid edge, mid edge, jump. Land. Okay, so we've got that. Now the next thing we're going to consider, I'm just going to put my pipe down and in fact I'm going to put all of these things down because we need to consider a key, a key factor in, in the really interesting style of Bucknell and the wonder of Cotswold Morris, it's an absolute wonder, is the fact that every tradition has some unique facets that make it just completely wonderful. They're, they're all wonderful in different ways, but Bucknell has got some amazing stuff. And one of the really wonderful things which uh, is great on Pipe and Tabor is playing for the quick down arm movements. So the quick down arm movements go like this. Quick down, quick, quick down, jump, quick down, quick down, jump. So you've got that, it's referred to as a quick down. Some of the other um, movements in Bucknell are referred to as the jerk because <laughs> uh, hopefully not nothing to do with the people actually doing it <laughs> but to do with the fact that um, to do with the fact that um, it's a very sort of jerky tradition. So you've got this quick down thing. So that's the quick down arm movement. So let's just consider how that affects our, our tabering. So the way that the way that I'm going to do it, and there are lots of different ways ways of approaching these these issues, but the way I'm going to do it today is I'm going to modify the mid edge that we've got. We've got that mid edge thing going on for our general stepping. So I'm going to modify that so that the mid edge thing goes quick down, quick down, step, step, jump, land, quick down, quick down, step, step, jump, land, quick 
down, back down, step, step, jump, land. Okay, and let's just try that once more because this is really quite important. Let's try it one more time. Back down, back down, step, step, jump, land. Back down, back down, step. Okay, so we've done all of those wonderful things. Um, so you'll be glad that uh, there is now an opportunity for uh, you to hear somebody else's voice because we have Fizz of the Quiz who is going to be asking you a question uh, for which you will answer in the chat. Over to you, Fizz of the Quiz. Hi, everybody. So the question is, of the dancer, I'm not hearing you, Fizz. And the pie, which one do you think takes? Okay, I think we lost Fizz Can there. you hear me now? Can you start again, please, Fizz? I'm unmuted. It's not that. Can you, you hear me now? Yes, I can yes, hear you. Yes, we can hear you now. Sure. Can you hear me now? Yes. Thank you. Okay. So we have the dancer, we have the pipe, and we have the tabor. What I'd like you to do in the in the chat is to say which one do you think comes first? Which one is the highest order of priority? That's the first one you put down. Second one, and then the third one. So dancer D. Pipe P T for Tabor. Just just write three initials. Just chuck chuck it in the chat and I'll see it. Thank you very much. Get uh -huh. typing. <laughs> right, so while Fizz is processing those chats, um let's just uh let's just answer that let's just ask that question again. So that question was we've got a hierarchy. Um We've got some three things in play. We've got pipe, tabor, and dancer. Um, there's obviously some synergy involved, but in order of importance, top to bottom, which way do they go? So, Fizz, are you starting to get any answers? Is there anything down at the chat from you? I'm getting a few actually coming direct to me. It says DTP, which sounds like desktop processing to me. <laughs> DTP, I'm liking the cut of their jib. DTP, absolutely, yes. That's absolutely right. So DTP is the way forward. So yeah, the dancer is prime. That's, I mean, basically that's what Russell always said to me. He said, the dancer is really important. The Tabor supports the dancer, facilitates all of that. The pipe is trying to support those two other things as well. If the pipe all goes pear-shaped, it's not actually the end of the world. It's the other two that are really important. Um, but hopefully we can get all of them going. Okay, so that was our first fizz of the quiz intervention. I hope you enjoyed that. <laughs> right, so let's have a look at holding the pipe. So, um, So uh, we need uh, we need to focus back on me, please, Mr. Focus Person. Hurrah, yes. Okay. Right, so so um, basically what we're doing in terms of tabering is we're we're doing this um, this driving thing with our strong hand. So if our strong hand is our right hand, we're tabering, driving the dancer with that. If our strong hand is our left hand, as it is with, for example, Ollie Simons, he has it all the other way around. So we're driving the dancer with our tabering stick with our strong hand. The other hand is holding the pipe. So I think Steve's done a video on this, but in case uh, anybody needs any clarification, you can have like a little bit of um, rubber band around your pipe if that is something that is helping you. That is a way of just getting a little bit of extra solidity. I personally find I don't need it, but you know, 
anything that works for you. It has to be, the whole thing has to be really, really solid. So you should be able to go like this. You should be able to say, hurrah for the pipe and tabor. And it's not going to come out of your hand because you've got a really strong grip between these two fingers. And then you've got the thumb coming up onto the thumb hole. And then these two fingers are over the holes. And I think Steve's done a video showing that there are a couple of different ways of covering the holes. I um, I like to have my fingers very much sort of embedded, the, the, the fleshy bits of the fingers embedded into the holes. I know Steve likes the other way, which is more, more of a flat way because he's come at it from bagpipe. Tabbering, tabbering. <laughs> <laughs> I've, put, I've put the, um, I've put a link in the chat to the YouTube of uh, how to hold a tabber pipe. Yeah. And um, if, we, if we can put that on the, um, on the follow up information that goes out on Monday. Yep. Cool, brilliant. So anyway, so it needs to be very solid. So that's all good. So we, we're now holding our pipe. I actually don't need my rubber band, so I will demonstrate if I can find my other pipe that I don't need it. Uh, maybe I can't find it. Okay, oh yeah. I'll go with this one. Right. So, so we're holding our pipe. Let's, oh, it's in my other hand. That's where it's gone. <laughs> you can't get the staff, can you? <laughs> right, so I got one here. I'm not, um, I'm not using rubber bands. Right, what we're going to do now is we're going to think about um, how we're going to actually blow um, uh, blow into this thing. We're going to think of that tune. So, so without blowing into the pipe, um, we're going to try a bit of um, tonguing. We're going to do the blowing. And we're also going to be trying to blow from the diaphragm. So from here, those of you who have pelvic floors that you know are in good shape, you'll find this easier. And you should be blowing from from there. So you take a big, a big breath of air, and then you go. And that as an exercise is worth doing, even if you kind of think you can play the tune anyway. You, you might be surprised how much better it will come out if you can really control all of that. Okay, so that's our tonguing. And of course, when I, when I teach tonguing to, um, to my 11 year old pipe and tabor pupil, I always say tonguing, <laughs> just to remind him it's tonguing, that's the name. Right, so we got our tongue in, we've got our, our breathing from the diaphragm. What we're going to do now is we're going to um, get some notes in a really controlled fashion going up the scale. We're going to start with the bottom note of the usable scale, but before we do that one, let's find the note which is of no use to us whatsoever, which is the one, if you cover all of the holes and blow very gently, you get Hopefully you can all hear that one. That's utterly useless to the Morris Tabor. So we're going to overblow to get the first one like this. So we got that one. And I'm blowing from my diaphragm and I'm putting a little bit of a as I go in there. Okay. So then I'm going to go up the scale like this. So that's our first few notes. And you can get some kind of quite nice tone if you can really blow from the diaphragm. You can even have a little bit of blown vibrato if you want to. And let's get a couple more notes and that'll be all that we need for this tune.
And that's all that we need for this tune. Right, so we've done from D up the scale to, woo, what is it? I think it's a B, isn't it? Yes, D up to B, that's what we've done. So now what we're going to do is we're going to try the first two bars of the tune. So it's going to start with, um, with the two fingers off. Let's all try that and see if we can really control the sound. Let's make it a nice sound that sounds good as much as we can. Oh, sorry. So we're going. So we've all done that first bit and then it goes on like this. I'm going to start from the beginning. we're going down we're ending on that E note okay let's just try that let's make that really so try and make a really nice sound using that tonguing and that blowing from the diaphragm And those of you who want to do something advanced, you can have a little bit of a nice, um, nice twirl at the end. You can go. <laughs> you can put in a little twirl or trill, as it would be known for the classical people. So we got a little trill at the end there. And then the last bit of the tune is going to start on the overblown all fingers on. It's going to sound up. Try again. And those of you who want a more advanced sound, you can make that last note sound really nice by going, instead of going, you can go, and it will sound nice. So, the whole of the A music. Okay, so we have done all of the A music on the pipe. It is time for, you guessed it, Fizz of the Quiz. Hooray! Over to you, Fizz of the Quiz, to ask a question. Okay, I hope you can hear me this time. Can you? Yeah, yeah great. Very good, good. Okay, so Andy's mentioned two pipe blowing techniques and your task is to write in the chat and send it to me uh, write in the chat what those are aha so two pipe blowing techniques which are they send them to visit the quiz and we'll see what we've got at the chat what do we have at the chat at the chat, do we have any answers yet? Two pipe blowing techniques. Are there any coming through yet? Yes, at the chat we have, <laughs> um, we have overblowing. We have blowing softly and overblowing. Yeah. Tonguing in diaphragm, we have a lot of answers. Lots of answers mentioned. Overblows and trills. Oh. Tonguing. Tonguing and, and diaphragm breathing. Whoa, excellent. This is awesome. Blowing and overblowing. 
Very, very good. I think that's all we have at the moment. Okay, I think that's quite enough for anyone at this point. I'm, I am blown away by the quality of our wonderful people on this workshop. They are amazing. Okay, right, so that's all good. Thank you, Fizz of the Quiz. Right, so we have gone through all the A music and we're just now going to have a look at the B music. So, the B music is going to start... Um, it's going to start with that um, that A note, which is the um, so as we go, it's going to be that one. So we're going to go from the from the A down to the E, which is the one finger off, down to there. So let's try that. And of course, if you want to kind of make that sound even nicer, because it does sound quite nice already, you can go, which is the thing that we did earlier on, isn't it? A nice little twerble. <laughs> or, which is quite fun. And then there's a little answering passage And of course, if you wanted to ornament that, you could go. And you could have a little trill on that. Wow, the possibilities are endless. You can get some lovely sounds. So the whole of the B music goes like this. And of course, at the end of that, again, if you want to make that sound nice, instead of just going, you can go, which is kind of quite fun, isn't it? So the whole of the B music is. And if you wanted to make it even more executive level, you could have a little, um, little tiny run at the end. Possibilities are endless, really, aren't they? <laughs> you can get some lovely sounds. Okay, that's our B music. <clears throat> Let's have a look at the C music. The C music goes like this. It starts with... Um, Starts with the F sharp, which is the two fingers off. So that's the two notes off. And then, and then, but it's really tempting to do a nice little trill there. So it becomes like this. And that's right. So you're doing a little trill to get that nice, lovely trilled E, upper note trill. Or you can go. Which is kind of really nice, rather nice, isn't it? <clears throat> so the whole of the C music is. Okay, so we have done the B and the C. Right, let us um, let us come back and we're going to sing and taver to the mid edge. <clears throat> so remind ourselves how that technique works. <clears throat> so. Let's do that for the whole of the uh, the whole of the A, B, and C. Okay, so here we go. And the really 
only good thing is, on the sea, you don't have to taper because it's always clapping. And it's kind of quite nice to have a difference in sound. So there we just go da 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 Okay, so let's try. Let's try with the um let's try the pipe and taver with the mid edge and with no tavering. Here we go, we're gonna try all the way through A, B and C. Okay, so we've gone all the way through that, which is all quite jolly. So it is now time for Fizz of the Quiz with her next question. Over to you, Fizz of the Quiz. So this is, uh, has nothing to do with what Andy has said so far, but maybe it was covered in Steve's talk, I don't know. But anyway, <laughs> let's be imaginative about this. Can you give me the date or an idea of data, the earliest reference to an English Morris Tabor's hat. And if you want to describe the hat you imagine might have been referenced at that point, please go ahead. And could you just um, send it to me, please, in the chat? Thank you. Aha. So we are thinking, you know, Tabor is like, you know, they like their wardrobes. They don't like wardrobe malfunctions. They like their wardrobes. They like to look good. Can you give me the date, or give Fizz of the Quiz the date of the first reference to an English Morris Taborer's hat? <laughs> Are there any answers coming through, Fizz of the Quiz? Okay, at the chat, Andy, we have got various <laughs> answers. We've got 16th century. Whoa. Um, you, you've just made it. <laughs> just, no, I haven't just made this. No, it's it's kind of rather old and battered. But no, 1750, 1600 floppy brim hat. I'm not getting any colours yet. <laughs> Draw a boat of 1560, 1515, 12th century, 1400 somewhere. 1400 somewhere. Whoa. Well, I wonder who 1400 somewhere was because... I think David Bush. David Bush, I think, has hit the jackpot because I think the answer, as far as I know, is 1448, when the goldsmiths of London employed uh, a set of Morris dancers and Tabra and paid for the hats. So, uh, yeah, we go. 1448, that's the earliest reference to English Morris dancing that has been found so far. And it includes a Tabra and the Tabra's hat. Right, I think we need okay. to, we have, Andy, we have to, a little bit of time for description and colour, if you can give that. Oh, well, yeah, um, unfortunately, <laughs> unfortunately, I have uh, no information on uh, on what the hat would have been like. So I'm sorry. All, we, all that we know is that it was sufficiently important that they had a separate budget for the hats. So, yeah, quite important. Yeah, lots of money for the hats. Right, okay, so that was that. So let's think about, um, let's think about the fact that we've got now to really emphasize those, um, those quick downs. So remember the quick downs? It was the, um, it was the thing where the, the handkerchief comes down, so, so let's have a quick go at playing the A with the quick downs. Andy, there's yep. a there's a question that says um that was a bit fast and could you break down coordinating the pipe and tabor? Could you break that down a bit, please? 
coordinating the pipe and saber. Okay, I think I think breaking down um, coordinating the pipe and saber is all about um, um, really knowing the dance. Um, so you really have to be absorbed into the whole. You know, the, the dance has to be kind of in your head. Um, really important. Um, if it's not, then it's not really going to um, come very easily. So it's really about absorbing the dance and then um, thinking about how the dance translates into the tabering. And in this case, we've got this, um, these, um, these snatch downs, these, these pull, um, snatch downs with the handkerchief and then the back steps and then the jump land. So we're we're doing that in terms of this. So really what you can do is you can you can um, practice and it's all about practice. So you can mentally practice how the dance goes. You can sing the tune, do little steps if you can't do the whole dance, do little steps to sort of get the feel of it. Um, you can do um, some stepping where you're singing the tune and doing some of the, um, the tabering. So we can have another go at that now with the A music. Here we go, let's have a go at that. So we're gonna go mid edge, mid edge, mid edge, mid edge, mid edge, mid edge, jump, land. Mid edge, mid edge, mid edge, mid edge, mid edge, mid edge, jump, land. So you can do that. Often you have to learn the tune separately and then pull the things together. Maybe you spend some time, you know, you know, iteratively, because iterative is always good. Maybe you spend a few minutes on the pipe, a few minutes on the tabor, a few minutes trying to pull them together. It's all about, unfortunately, there is, uh, as well as a huge amount of fun, there is quite a lot of hard graft involved in doing it well. But you know, that's true of every instrument, isn't it? And every every art form that's worth doing. So, so that's- Andy, can I just interrupt you? I've got a question yeah. is, it would help to know which notes you were playing on the pipe uh, to go with the, 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 the drum beats, the drum balls. Okay, so all right, yeah, okay. Okay, so, so let's have a look at our, our A music again. Let's uh, let's play it slowly on the pipe on its own. So at the start it's going like that and those quick downs are going So it is the first strong thing that's going on in the middle. So let's just go that really, really slowly. That's right. <laughs> so they're the emphasis points. So let's try that. That's a very good question. Thanks for asking that. Let's try that again. So that first note is the first note of the tune, which is the... So sometimes you sort of wonder with buttonal tunes whether, um, whether some bits of them are, are sort of designed to be as, as easy as possible. Um, I don't know if they are or not, but it's kind of quite nice the fact that on this you've got You've got this really nice relaxed situation to start the to start the tune where you've got your two fingers off for that first F sharp note, um, and that's when you're really hitting with the tabor.
So actually, in this tune, on the A music, it's a really good question. Every really lifting thing that's going on with the tabor is happening on F sharp, which is a really easy note to play, because it's just this resting position, these two fingers off. So let's just try that again, just the way we did it. Because we're we're always putting a land after the jump at the end so after the jump you wait and you you only do this when you see the the lead dancer um, it's this is a jig so probably there's only gonna be one person dancing at a time uh, that's the person you're following okay and in a set dance it would be the number one or the best dancer would be the person you'd be following Okay, so we have done, we have done the A, we've, we've emphasized those bits. Let's see if we can add in and, you know, uh, if you can't do it today, it's something to go away and work on. So we're gonna put in those mid edge bits in between the strong things. So we're gonna go like this. So we've used that quite a lot of time. So I'm going to whiz on now. So, <clears throat> um, and I think that you may need to do some homework, which is fine. There are videos on uh, available on pythontaber.org. You can go away and and um, practice along to them. So I'm going to fairly quickly for the first for the last section of the workshop. I'm going to analyse what happens in the um, the other parts of the dance. So, so in the first B, um, in the sidestep, the sidestep is um, going in a way that is going to require um, some tabering like this. So it's going to go sidestep, double step, sidestep, double step, and then it's going to go. There's going to go. There's going to be a, a recurrent theme at the end of a lot of these sections of the dance. It happens a lot in Bucknell. Let me just show you what this is. So basically, what's happening is you're having a half caper followed by two plain capers. Half caper, two plain capers. Half caper, two plain. Sorry, <laughs> half caper. Whoa. That's better. Okay, right. So it's basically right, left, right, left, right. So in terms of tabering, that translates into so right, left, right, left, right. So so I'm just going to play the B, and we're going to have to be fairly speedy now to get through everything in the workshop and we can take some questions at the end so so the b is going to be like this let's try that again So at the end there was that right, left, right, left, right. Okay, so <clears throat> that's the first B with side steps. The second time through the through the sequence, um, you're going to get instead of the side steps uh, followed by the half caper and the two capers, you're going to get three half capers followed by two capers. So the tabering is going to go like this. Right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, keeper, keeper. 
So you're basically just tabering, following the dancer. And the height they go off the ground is going to vary, but you can practice watching Ollie Simons, who is a great person to, to be. The, the video is there. You can, you can go away and practice. And, um, and you can just kind of just gradually get to a point where you're happy to, to tabor. And it's, it's, it's inspiring stuff. It really is. Right, that's that section. Now, um, the next thing we need to look at is the double capers. And this is a glorious part of, of Bucknell. And basically, a double caper <coughs> goes like this, out and out, in, out and out, in, like that. So you have um, four of them. You've got out and out, in, out and out, in, out and out, in, out and out, in. And then you have the thing that we had before, the half caper, caper, caper. So that's a recurring theme. So in terms of tabering, this is where it gets really quite, quite fun. So for the double caper, you want to emphasize that in. That really helps the dancer. There's really clear, clear evidence that um, a lot of people dance Bucknell without really doing the steps the way that they were noted down. So there's a lot of, there's a lot of flippy floppy stuff going on that is not really as it was collected. But if you want to, if you want to actually get that out and out in, out and out in, which is what was collected, then you can, you can table like this. You can go out and out in, out and out in, out and out in, out and out in, and then you follow with the half caper, caper. So let's have a look at that again. Out and out in, out and out in, out and out in, out and out in. Half caper, caper, caper. Okay, so that's the double capers. So uh, that goes to um, slow music. We'll have a quick look at the slow music. Um, so the slow music is like a like a slowed version of the of the B. So it goes like this. Like that. So, so it's the same notes as the B. You're just doing that slow thing. And again, this is something you probably need to go away and practice um, along to the videos. But you can do the, the tabering with the with the pipe let's just try that try that again here we go okay now i'm conscious that we want to sort of whiz through so we can have some some nice Q and A. So I'm just going to play that once more and then we'll go on to the upright capers. So here we go. Same thing again. Okay, so that's the double capers. So the last, the last variation, uh, instead of double capers, we're now doing upright capers. And you might be familiar with these if you've seen Bucknell. So it's the thing where, thing where there's, uh, let's do it diagonally so you can sort of see it. So the foot coming back. So it goes D, 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 D. And then the standard half caper. D, 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 D. Okay, so this is going to be a bit slower than the speed for the double capers. So it's going to be more like this. So I'm just going to sing it to start with. Uh, and what we're going to do is we're going to be tabering basically to try and build up 
to the big split jump. So when the foot goes back, we're kind of doing a like a little rolly thing to draw attention to something exciting that's going to happen. So we're going to go D, 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 D. So we got that big lift and land to the split um, caper and we're the bit at the beginning is really just a, a nice roll thing that's happening. Rolls are a lot easier if you can get a really nice wiggly stick situation. And of course Steve is showing on his screen, he's showing one of these sticks. <clears throat> one of these sticks which is, this is a different sort of stick. There are all sorts of sticks you can use. The key thing is to get that wibble 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 thing. Going. I put a, I put a uh, rubber band on. If it's an ordinary drumstick, I put a rubber band on the on the balance point. Oh, okay. So Steve does that. I I don't find I need to do that. So maybe uh, that's just me. I've got a looser hold. So if I stopped, if I didn't have a rubber band, it would just fall out of my hand. <laughs> okay, well, well, I'm quite, I'm quite I'm quite happy doing all this stuff. Um, just like that, but then that's just me. <laughs> so anyway, so everybody has to find their own way of doing these things, but basically we're doing this nice roll at the beginning. So we're going So <clears throat> let's just try that uh, with the tune. Okay, so we are whizzed through. So in an hour, we've covered all the building blocks of the jig <clears throat> and we've had the fizz quiz. Um, everybody's going to be at a different place in terms of where they're learning stuff. So um, hopefully some things are making some sense, even if, you know, it's probably not at an ideal speed for everyone because a workshop like this kind of can't be really. <clears throat> so what I suggest we do now is we um, we have a go at playing the whole the whole sequence. So basically um, the whole sequence is going to be uh, it's going to be a foot up. <clears throat> well it's going to be once to yourself to start with. So once through the A music. Then it's going to be a foot up which is two A's. It's going to be a side step which is a B, ending on the, which is the classic <clears throat> Bucknell ending for things. It's going to be some clapping. Um, then we're going to have another two A's foot up. Then we're going to have a B, which is the half capers. Um, then we're going to have um, some clapping again. Then we're going to have another foot up, which is two A's. Then we're going to have the double capers. Out and out, in, out and out, in, out and out, in, out and out, in. Followed by some clapping. Then we're going to have a foot up. We're going to have the upright capers, which is the... And then we're going to have some clapping and then the, the dance finishes with two A's and the final A has four capers. So it's going to go, uh, it's going to go, um, it's going to have the um, down, down, keeper, 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 keeper. Okay, so uh, that's probably utterly bewildering to anybody who hasn't really um, spent a lot of time on this chick. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, hopefully, ho hopefully it's been a bit of fun. Let's have a go. We're going to have a go at doing that whole sequence. So we're going to be starting with the once to yourself and we're going to be going through. Okay, here we go. I'm going to try and keep it at a reasonably 
um, measured speed, you'll find on the video that Ollie probably dances it slightly faster than I'm going to play it. And you can go away and work on the video, which is awesome. Or you can go back and work on the video of the slow music. Okay, right, here we go. Ready, and... Okay, right, it is now time for questions. Andy, one question we've had um, from Pete in Anglesey. Uh, he was asking, he hasn't understood the, um, the significance of A, B and C, so perhaps you could uh, describe that, because that hasn't... He's probably, he's probably trying to do two things at once and couldn't hear what you were saying when he was trying to do the other thing. Okay, yeah. So um, so for anybody uh, not familiar with, um, with the way that Morris music is normally notated, it's um, the music is normally divided into sections and um, they have letters. And um, the foot up in this, in this case, the bit where... The, uh, the dancer is just dancing forwards um, and back with double steps and back steps and a jump. Uh, that's done to the A music. So it's called A music and, and it, a little A is written on the, on the written music. Um, the, uh, the bit that varies um, uh, next, that comes up next, which is the side step or, and half capers or uh, the next time around, it's it's it is half capers. Um, that's called the B music. The bit that's um, used for clapping is called the C music, and C is written on that in the music. And the um, the slower music that is used for the double capers that was the the thing where we were going out and out in out and out in or the, um, the split jumps, the upright capers. That's the D music. Um, so it's just something that you kind of, you get, you get used to this concept um, as you go into um, uh, Morris music. Um, and it, it also um, applies in, in playing for early dance as well and various other types of playing for dance, even for Kaylee dance, actually. It's, you still get these, these uh, letters um, helping you work out 
how the music fits the dance. Would it, would it help if um, we showed the video of you playing for Ollie? Uh, have you got it conveniently? I've got it lined up. Yeah, I've got it lined okay. up. Yeah, yeah. That, I think that might help uh, put yeah, the Yeah, that might well help, yeah. We so do over that? to you, Steve. Over to you, Steve, yeah. Go, go, go. Optimise for video. Right, are we ready? <laughs> By the marvel of technology, we have split screen. <laughs> Yeah, so that <clears throat> that that brings together. You, you can see the the sequence there, and obviously there's kind of a letter associated with each with each bit. So each foot up is an A music, for example. Um, and I, I think perhaps it's with, with something like this jig. It, it it's um it, it's something that you know if it's not immediately obvious, go away and sort of just do some work, sort of get it in your head, and. Uh, and it, it's it's fun, you know. The investment is definitely worth it. Yeah. Do we have any uh, any more questions? Yes, we do. Um, um, Ab van Barneveld in the Netherlands asks, could you say something on mouth organ and tabor? Would that be possible? Um, I'm sure it would be possible. Um, I I did used to play the mouth organ. At, at one point, um, very, very early in my musical career. Um, yeah, and I, and I have I have played mouth organ and drum kit also. <laughs> uh, there, there was a dance tradition in the south of England, a step dance tradition to mouth organ and tambourine. And um, Martin Brinsford from a uh, you know, well-known um, percussionist and or oh, musician with Brass Monkey and people like that, um, he's actually done some some work on recovering that uh, that not the dances but the actual playing. Yeah. Mm. So I'm sure that you know, obviously you know you can do all the tabor stuff. <clears throat> um, uh, you can do that with with a mouth organ. You can you can certainly do that. So that's definitely um, something. Yeah, something to be, to try out. <laughs> I mean, you could also, uh, I mean, there are things, different things you can strike, like string drums and things. There's sort of tr traditions like that as well. So it doesn't have to be a taper as such. Yeah, that's all very true. So, yeah, you, you, you can. And that, that's what happens in uh, in some of the um, 
some of the traditions in the uh, Pyrenees, for example, that sort of area. Yeah, string drums instead of tables. Yeah. Aha, do we have any more questions? Right, um, so Beecroft is asking, struggling with a bit with my drum because it doesn't have much to hold on to. Um, good ways to strap it on. There's uh, many and various, um, aren't there? Yeah, there are just lots of different ways. And I think everybody, everybody is a bit different in, in what that they want in terms of control on on the instrument um you know whether they're happy to have something that is kind of moving around a little bit or, or they want something that's really solidly strapped on we're all slightly differently shaped so we might need our tabers to be in slightly different places um so steve has got steve has got the, the classic cotswold position um with the, the classic cotswold tabor yeah take us through that steve yeah, so so um, uh, this is a copy of the Bucknell Tabor. Um, so this is what a uh, copy of what Joe um, Pohl uh, played, and um, it's um, it, uh, it's quite a neat instrument. You can buy them from uh, Marcus Music uh, in um, in South Wales in Newport, and uh, the people play them in different ways. Uh, some people play them. I, yeah, I've got it so that I play it from my hand uh, and string it to my hand. Sometimes I do that. Sometimes I actually put an extra twist in it and it rests a bit against my arm so that it doesn't get blown about by the wind. I've got um, another one which was also based on the Bucknell one um, and this was made a long time ago by Bill Warder. I've got a small shorter hand hold on that and um, uh, again, that's a, actually it's very, it's very tight at the moment. I should turn it down a bit. But um, yeah, it um, it's quite high. You don't want the you don't want it very low, really. Um, the higher, the better. It's not a side drum uh, or anything like that. It's it's, it's quite high up. Um, but there are um, you know there are lots of ways of of holding the tabor. Um, but there are and there are also techniques of hitting it as well. But you know, you don't need that right at the start. There's <laughs> there's exactly. lots of ways to do it. Yeah. Yeah. And some people some people hang it around a strap around their shoulders, don't they? Yeah. Yeah. So um, yeah. Um, and then you could actually then also secure it around your waist if you wanted a specific position. Yeah. And some um, and some and angels tend to hold it on their top of their shoulder and it's held in place uh, by a wing which goes over the top. <laughs> Yeah. And, uh, that's quite handy if you happen to have a wing. Yeah, and uh, and and in in some of the fourteenth um, and fifteenth century illustrations, they have such small tabers that you can imagine they might have whipped out their codpiece. You know. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, the, um, the the cobbler tradition in uh, Catalonia, they have the little thing on their elbows, don't they? Yeah, yeah the really. Sort of... one. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So really, it's all about kind of getting into it and then maybe over time refining what you want to do about tabers you know maybe maybe the first taber you have might not end up being the last one perhaps <laughs> so is he a collector a a, 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 a serial <laughs> collector of tabers <laughs> absolutely yes <laughs> yeah. yeah uh do we have any more questions from the floor okay um there's a. Uh, there's also questions. Will we be uh, those delivering notation with the the drum strikes on it? I don't think the drum strikes are actually on the tune, are they? But they could be put in. A well, I think that would be down to you, Fizz, if you fancy doing that. Thank you very much. <laughs> um, well, in a way. In a way, that's counter to what you're trying to do, isn't it? Because you're watching the, the dancer. So you learn to watch the dance and watch the footfalls. That, yeah, what Steve says is true. And, and you really, you really, I think it's really important. You should be dancing it in your head. So, mm. you know, it, you know it, it's completely fine. You know, any, anybody who can't dance and, and wants to play that, that's great. But you need to be able to dance it in your head. So, so, uh, you know, there's kind of no excuse for sort of musicians being just accompanists, accompanists who don't understand 
anything about the dance and they're just sort of playing a tune along with it, it that that isn't gonna that, that's not what we're about here we're about immersion in the dance that, that's really what it's all about i'm i'm a i was a classically trained musician and i think with music for morris um i like to be able to sing the tune from memory so that if if there's any music i just use it to get to that point where i'm going to actually sing the tune from memory and then i transfer it into the instrument and do and really think about the rhythm and what's happening with the dancer uh and it almost uh, having been in a team where we had a like a natural learner of the melodeon and somebody who insisted she knew music because she learned the flute the latter would always just play the music and then put in gaps so we never trusted her as a dance you know as dancers don't, didn't trust her whereas the other person she might play all sorts of wrong notes in the tune but because she kept the rhythm going we trusted her so it's really about the drive of the dance governing everything else mm. and and reacting so it's about making your how you beat the drum a reaction to what you're seeing not to what you saw on a pa piece of paper yeah so the the ideal situation is that you you know the dance so well and you know the tune so well and you can taper to to imagining somebody dance it so well that all of that becomes automatic so that when you actually perform then you've only got about 20% of your brain power doing all that stuff. You're doing the tune and the, the basic tabering uh, using that 20% of your brain. And you've got 80% absolutely focused on the dancer. So you can make these microscopic adjustments in um, the amount you're, you're hitting, the, 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 speed, the, the, the speed that they're in the air, um, I've got I've got a good example here because I've got that video with Alex Alex Murray, and she she spends so long in the air <laughs> that you are, that you have to you have to you know really watch closely when she's going to land because she only actually touches the ground if it's artistically necessary. <laughs> uh, she's up in the air. Should, should I show a bit of that video? And you can yeah 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 yeah, yeah. So that, that's um, interesting that that, that that demonstrates exactly what you what exactly what you're saying hang on let's um make it full screen and um, that's the one share um this isn't in morris kids or anything like that it was just us rehearsing and it's it's not a known jig it's it's a jig that we do it's based on the rose which is a field town dance and we were just um we were just playing around um uh, devising a jig here Oops.
<laughs> yeah, so <clears throat> it is all about being able to do that adjustment, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, watching, I and mean, that was just entirely watching her feet all the way through and um, working, working, and we just know each other very well, and I know that dance very well, and I've played it and danced it so many times, so I just know what the feet are doing, you know? Mm. Yeah. Okay, we do, do have, have some more questions. Yes, uh, we do. Um, Catherine Ross asks if we'd like to learn more and take playing further, are there more resources beyond the beginners' videos you've pointed to for this session? Right, so, so on the uh, 4th of April, <clears throat> uh, 4 o'clock UK time. Uh, we're going to do a follow-up workshop, which is going to be on another Bucknell jig. So it's going to be consolidating the skills that we've looked at uh, in this workshop. So it's still Bucknell. Um, the steps are, um, are going to be similar. Um, the tabering techniques are going to be similar. So you can be working away on that. And I think Steve has uploaded the... Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's up there, um, and uh, I'll actually show the, um, the the site because we've got um, where is it? No, there we go. Let me just take it back. Um, so, uh, woo -hoo -hoo -hoo, where do we show screen? Um, yeah, well, this will do. So, uh, this is the Tabra Society um, uh, uh, YouTube channel. And if you go to playlists, we have playlists on Morris dance um, uh, workshops, beginner pipe and tabber beginners workshop, which uh, has got a lot of stuff on uh, technique ones, uh, like I say, Morris dance um, workshop ones generally. So y you'll find there's stuff on there for Renaissance dance, early music, things like that. But there's quite a lot on on Morris um, and we've got uh, these dances here. Um, uh, you know, so there's quite a lot of interesting, interesting stuff on there, and we're building that all the time. And also on our website, there is uh, stuff about Joe Paul, um, and uh, about him, and some uh, interesting stuff on there. But there is also um, how to play uh, the pipe and tabba beginners workshops and uh, we've got a bit about this workshop in here and the links to those tunes uh, so that's all that's all up there so that's um, the Tabra Society and uh, you can find that on YouTube so is the is the video for the next workshop yeah uh, it is yeah. it is absolutely okay. uh, let me just so that's called the green man the green man here here it is um, and uh, yeah, just um, the green man one is that one there yeah the green man Bucknell. and it's played nice and slow <laughs> and you can watch you can watch and his fingers as he does it <laughs> <laughs> yeah so what's there at the moment is a, a, like a slow version of the whole thing and then I'll be putting up the version with uh, with Ollie dancing it as well so, um, so that will be yeah. in the next couple of days. And, we have um, a... Oh, sorry. And the one that um, I was looking at doing following on from that was a really popular jig, uh, Ladies Pleasure. Excellent. So Bled, that's Bledington, uh, Ladies really Pleasure. Popular. So um, that that would be um, uh, the next one. Yeah. Yeah. One of our participants today, um, his team doesn't do Bucknell. Um, so what he's learning today, I think he would probably like help into transferring the skills that he's learning today into what his own team is doing. What would you suggest would be a good path for him? Um, so I think, <clears throat> I, I think to be honest with you, um, it's actually worth, it's actually worth sort of immersing yourself in, 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 in a, a Morris tradition um, doesn't necessarily have to be initially the one that you're going to spend a lot of time on because you are um, you're, you're, you're getting some techniques that you can use again and again so so in, in this Bucknell stuff you're um, you're getting dexterity with the right hand you're, you're getting you're getting techniques um, 
which are going to really help you um, translate into into other traditions. Which which, which tradition is um, is this person um, doing? Do we not, know? Not not revealed. Mm -hmm. Okay. Ooh. Okay, but <clears throat> but really, um, if you look at all the Cotswold traditions, they they all have um, they all have contrasts between things that you want to emphasise, like jumps or or um, you know surging forward or dynamic arm movements or perhaps movements that you you. you you want to emphasize but less strongly perhaps in the sidestep or something like that um they all have um all of those concepts so so you know it's i think it's perfectly valid to actually um learn a couple of bucknell um bucknell jigs to start with because because there's a load of reusable techniques that you can use there you know that almost every um cotswold tradition has has a jump and a land and you know it's really good to to make that really automatic um the uh the four capers and upright capers and things like that they do vary from tradition to tradition but if you've got the control of the stick and the tabor then you know once you once you've seen how you can do something in one tradition then you can make that you know, i think you can make that that transition to a, another tradition and um yeah it, so it's, it's all great this person could uh go along to well probably can't go along to morris practice but go to morris practice and perhaps just work out the tabering necessary as a first step to yeah absolutely yeah, yeah. yeah. And they go okay that that i i know i know i have to beat hard for a jump i need for emphasis i need to beat hard and softer for other things and so on and then introduce take one tune perhaps and introduce a tune well yeah. I, I, there is another approach which is quite handy at the moment and now whilst we're in lockdown is to watch a really really good video like one of the videos from the um uh uh sidmouth jig competition and tabor to those uh jigs because by and large the musicians playing for the jig competition are fantastic and uh, you don't get into the jig competition uh you know uh uh to to win it to, you, you don't win it if you if you're not right up there in being able to be totally at one with the dancer and uh so you know there are some fantastic musicians and if you then you could even turn the sound off watch the dancer and tabor to the dancer yeah you, that's that's a really good technique to to, to do that yeah. yeah and there's some brilliant brilliant as some um i find i i play with uh, mark rogers um you know who's a phenomenal musician for jigs and uh on melodian and uh i find it absolutely fantastic to the way he hits the the footfalls you know and and you can play tabor along with him uh excellent yeah I think this might be our last uh, question, unless yep. somebody else pops a question in the chat to me. Um, do we feel that the pipe and tape is a good instrument for non Cotswold traditions? Judith Proctor asks this. She plays for Longsword. Um, I don't see why it shouldn't be. Um, I, I know that I know it has been. I know it has been played for um, for, for sword dancing, certainly. Um, and I would imagine it would probably have been the um, the uh, traditional instrument for the the sword dancing that was done in Scotland historically. I would imagine. So I, I don't see why it wouldn't be. And, and I, I've done quite a lot of sword dancing myself. I, I I've I've certainly played it for um, played it for rapper, and um, and it would work fine for longsword. I think. Yeah. I I used to play for rapper playing pipe and triangle. <laughs> yeah because it, you with the triangle you can get a quite a nice tight rhythm uh playing you know it work it works uh it works very well but um uh it's a different technique playing for um for that because actually what you're trying to do there is play uh uh more usually a more steady rhythm um uh, um what do you call it um a more strict tempo approach and you can play patterns that relate to the particular style of of stepping there 
So um, yeah, there are there are different patterns you can play on the tabba. Tabba is a phenomenally a flexible instrument because uh, you know it's it's a dance instrument from the 14th century, um, possibly earlier as a dance instrument. We don't know you know uh, how much it's played for dance earlier, but we know it was the main dance instrument in the 14th and 15th century. All kinds of dance, and it's carried on. Uh, in Spain, they use it for. Um, you can dance the Paso Doble to it. You know, uh, there's there's all kinds of things that they they dance to that as strict tempo music, and they use it for sword dance, and Morris dance. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. So well, I... we've run out of time, I'm afraid. Is it last any last words, Andy? Well, I think. Um... I think it, you know we've we've had the limitations of the format, but it, it's lovely to have so many people here, and I I can kind of feel the the vibes of collective pipe and taberishness. You know what I mean? Oh. <laughs> so it's really lovely. So uh, yeah, thanks thanks everyone for coming. Can, and can you me. unmute yourself and give Andy and Stephen and Fizz a round of applause, please? Yeah. Unmute yourself. One, two, three. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> uh, right, so I hope to uh, see as many of you as possible. Um, Hang on, there's a lot of noise. I'm just, I've just muted everybody. Andy, can you unmute yourself? <laughs> yeah, so I uh, hope to see as many of you as possible in the follow-up workshop. That's Sunday the 4th of April, 4 p.m. Uh, details will be on pipeandtabor.org and uh, do do become a member of the Taborist Society. Yeah. You'll find details on how to do that on pipeandtabor.org as well. Um, anybody needs to message me or Steve somehow, I'm sure that would be great as well. You well, know. there's information going out that Pauline will be sending out and it will have on it the hope oh, it will have on the, the link. We could even put the link for the next mess uh, the next session on that yeah we should do it and the link for the youtube channel um and the page on our um uh, the the workshop page on the on the festival and also the link for um for my um just giving bowel cancer uk <laughs> Don't oh, yeah I mustn't forget <laughs> um i i'm thrilled with the response from your uh when I did the talk a couple of weeks ago, um, I think I'm now over 200 and something pounds uh, on that. So um very, very pleased. Thank you. Thank you, everybody who's donated. And uh, please donate more. <laughs> yeah, yeah, please donate. If you haven't donated, please donate. And if you have donated, donate again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And thank, thanks ever so much to Pauline for organizing everything and, and all any support staff she may have. And. <laughs> And uh, merry tabering squirrels to you all. Merry tabering squirrels to you all. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> bye, bye, bye. Bye bye. 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 bye.